We all want to live long, healthy lives. If you're watching this, you probably pay attention to your diet, your sleep, physical activity, toxic exposure, and many other variables that contribute to lifelong health. And these are all critical factors when it comes to our health span. But a growing body of research suggests that there's another factor that makes an equally big difference. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what that factor is, share the research behind it, and explain how you can leverage it to extend your health span and feel and perform better today. Ready? Let's get to it. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Kresser here with another Tuesday tip video for you. If you're interested in free tips on how to optimize your health, improve your performance, and extend your lifespan, hit the subscribe button in the lower right corner and tap the bell icon to get notified when new videos are available. We need about 40 micronutrients to function optimally. When we don't get enough of even just a few of these, our bodies start to break down and our lifespan shortens. Dr. Bruce Ames, a biochemistry and molecular biology professor at UC Berkeley, has developed a hypothesis for why this happens called triage theory. He proposes that all proteins and enzymes in the body can be classified into two categories, survival proteins and longevity proteins. Survival proteins are those that we need for immediate short-term survival, whereas longevity proteins are those that contribute to longer-term health and well-being. For example, vitamin K-dependent proteins could be categorized into those required for short-term survival, primarily blood clotting functions, and those involved in long-term health, like regulating calcium metabolism and supporting cellular function. The triage theory holds that even modest deficiency of a single nutrient triggers a built-in rationing mechanism that favors the proteins needed for immediate survival and reproduction while sacrificing those needed to protect against future damage, which would be the longevity proteins. This is true because survival and longevity proteins require the same vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients to work. If there's a shortage of a particular nutrient, the body will always prioritize what's needed for short-term survival. That's the evolutionary imperative for us to be able to pass on our genes to the next generation. Evolution is nothing if not efficient. This is a dramatic shift in how scientists are now thinking about the role of nutrients in human health. Historically, micronutrients were thought of as compounds that were crucial for survival or protection against severe disease. Now we're beginning to realize the critical but still underappreciated role they play in optimal function, aging, and longevity. If Ames' triage theory is true, it would explain why mild nutrient deficiencies that aren't enough to cause overt clinical symptoms still contribute hugely to the aging process and the diseases of aging. And this is what makes optimizing nutrient status so tricky and so important. Ames isn't talking about full-blown nutrient deficiencies that would cause acute conditions like rickets, scurvy, beriberi, and pellagra. Those diseases are relatively rare now, at least in the developed world. He's talking about nutrient intake that falls short of the RDA, or is maybe even between the RDA and the optimal amount, which is often higher than the RDA, especially for nutrients like magnesium, which support over 700 enzymatic reactions in the body. The problem is that it's difficult to know if you're falling short of this optimal nutrient intake. You may not develop any symptoms in the short term at all, or if you do, they'll likely be nonspecific symptoms like low energy, brain fog, poor sleep, digestive or skin issues, exactly the type of mild symptoms that almost everyone today experiences at least some of. It's also unlikely that your doctor or healthcare provider will be of much help here. Testing for nutrient status is notoriously difficult and complex, and it's certainly not covered by most insurance plans. I know this firsthand. I've tested virtually all of my patients for nutrient status over my 15 year career as a functional medicine clinician, and I've also trained several thousand healthcare professionals on how to do it. It's hard to get a clear picture of what's going on without running hundreds or even thousands of dollars of tests because each different nutrient requires different methods to be detected accurately. 
For example, 99.5% of the magnesium in our bodies is stored in our tissues. So if we try to measure it in the serum or even inside of the red blood cell, which are the two most commonly available ways of testing magnesium, we're not going to get a true picture of our magnesium status. There's a similar problem with calcium. It has to be maintained within a very tight range in the blood. So if our dietary intake of calcium falls short, the body will remove calcium from the bones just to maintain that normal range in the blood. This means that even when someone is not consuming enough calcium in their diet, the blood test for calcium will still be normal. It's even worse for vitamin K2. We simply don't have a way of measuring it in any body fluid or tissue right now. I could go on, but you get the idea. Most people that aren't getting the optimal amount of nutrients in their diet don't even know that because they don't have a clear way of understanding that they're coming up short. So what does this mean for those of us that are interested in optimizing our health span? Well, if we wanna do that in the short term and also live a long disease-free life, we need to maximize our intake of the 40 micronutrients that our bodies need. I'm not talking about just getting the minimal amount of a nutrient that is required to avoid acute disease. I'm talking about getting the amount needed to avoid triage, as Dr. Bruce Ames defines it, where our bodies are prioritizing short-term needs and sacrificing long-term needs. Sadly, recent statistics suggest that the vast majority of people are falling way short of these optimal nutrient intakes. For example, 100% don't get enough potassium, 94% don't get enough vitamin D, 92% don't get enough choline, 89% don't get enough vitamin E, 67% don't get enough vitamin K, 52% don't get enough magnesium. But as shocking as those statistics are, they are almost certainly underestimating the true rates of nutrient inadequacies because they don't take factors like bioavailability, health status, or recent updates to average body weight and the RDA, which increase the amount of nutrients that we should be getting in the diet. So this is why I've become so passionate about nutrient density. It's one of the most important factors that determine our health and longevity, and yet it is rarely discussed in the mainstream or even in the functional and integrative medicine communities. So what do we do about this if we wanna promote lifelong health? Diet should always be the foundation of any strategy to maximize nutrient intake. But thanks to challenges in the modern world like declining soil quality, a growing toxic burden, and a shift toward industrial food production, we can no longer rely on diet alone to meet all of our nutrient needs. This is why I recently launched Adapt Naturals, a supplement line designed to close the nutrient gap and help people ensure that they're getting everything they need for lifelong health. Just click the button in the video or head over to adaptnaturals.com to learn more. I'm also gonna put a link to two articles I've written that are relevant to this topic. One is on the optimal human diet from a nutrient density perspective, and the other is on why nutrient density is so important. I go into much more depth uh, on this topic in that article, and then how to maximize nutrient density in your diet. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the subscribe button in the lower right and tap the notification bell so you'll be updated when I release new videos. And if you know someone that might benefit from this, please share it with them. Most people have no idea how significant this issue of nutrient density is and how it might be impacting their health. The good news is that it's relatively simple to address, unlike many other more complex health challenges and interventions. Thanks for watching everybody, and I'll see you next time.